Hello and welcome to this lesson on diffraction gradients, which is part of the waves topic for AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at diffraction gradients and how to experimentally use the diffraction gradient equation. So if you have learned and been successful in today's lesson, you should be able to compare the single slit diffraction pattern with the pattern due to diffraction gradients, detail the interference pattern produced by a diffraction gradient, and then finally calculate values based on the diffraction gradient investigation. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at 3.3.2.2 diffraction in the AQA A-level physics specification. We're in particular looking at the diffraction grating section of this particular specification. So previously, we've considered the diffraction pattern produced when waves are passed through a double slit. And you can see the following interference pattern produced. Now, this is the Young's double slit experiment where we pass a wave through two slits. They then interfere with each other, producing an interference pattern. Now you can see here that you'll get areas of maximum, maxima and minima when you carry out this particular uh, diffraction experiment. Now you can also carry out the same experiment but with using more than two equally spaced slits. Now a diffraction gradient contains lots of equally spaced slits very close together and can be used to carry out this investigation. So the pattern produced is basically the same when a wave passes through a diffraction gradient as the, as the, as the one produced with the double slits except that the bright bands are brighter and narrower and the dark bands in between those bright bands are darker. So we can say that the diffraction pattern is sharper. So as you can see in this particular image, the bright fringes are more are brighter and sharper and more narrow than if it was a double slit experiment. And again, you can see here, the more slits that you have, you can see your fringes are getting narrower, narrower brighter and sharper. Now, as we mentioned before, in a diffraction grating, there are many equally spaced slits at right angles to the uh, wave instant to the diffraction grating. So when monochromatic light is passed through a diffraction grating, an interference pattern is formed. Now the interference pattern produced is really sharp as there are many beams passing through the grating and they reinforce the pattern. Now having a sharper pattern is very useful as it allows for more accurate measurements to be taken between uh, of measurements between in those fringe spaces. Now from monochromatic light, all the, maxima are in, all the maxima produced in the diffraction pattern are produced in sharp lines. Now we identify each line of maximum brightness as an order of magnitude, given the symbol N. Now the line at the center of the pattern, in the same which is in the same plane as the, as the beam, okay, um, is on the gradient, is called the zero order line, N equals zero. So you can see here on your diagram, the zero order line. Now the lines at either side of the zero order line are called the first order lines. So you can see here our first order lines in this diffraction pattern. Now the lines on either side of the first order lines are called the second order lines as shown here and it continues on and on and on. Now we can derive a relationship between the angle, uh, between the order of diffraction and the zero with order, which we'll call theta, the wavelength of the wave lambda, the, diffract the order of diffraction n and the distance between the slits d. So what we can say is that when a wave passes through the slits of a diffraction grating, the path difference at the zero with order uh, maximum is zero. They are in phase. So there's constructive interference there, so we know that they must be in phase. Now at the first order maxima, there's also constructive interference because a bright fringe is being formed. So therefore the path difference between the two waves is lambda, one whole wavelength, so they are in phase because what is happening is the wave from one slit lines up with the waves from the next slit that are exactly one wavelength behind. So we can take this further on and therefore say at the nth order maxima that the path difference is equal to n lambda. So if we consider this by looking at a triangle in the diagram shown on the screen, we can use trigonometry to derive an expression for these values. So we can look at this triangle and say sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So in this situation, in this triangle, lambda is the uh, opposite and d is the hypotenuse, where d is the distance between the two slits and lambda is the path difference between those two waves okay, which is also equal to the wavelength so therefore we can say for the order of diffraction n equals one sine theta one is equal to n lambda over d 
Now for the order of refraction 2, n equals 2, we can say that for this sign, theta is equal to 2 lambda over d. Because when two, when the waves are coming from two slits apart, you can therefore, well not from two slits apart, but from the second order, you can see that there's now two whole wavelengths between them because they're still arriving in phase, so it must be an integer of the wavelength. So therefore we can take it to the nth order and say that for the nth order of diffraction, sine theta is equal to n lambda over d. So this does give us our diffraction grating equation, which is d sine theta is equal to n lambda, where d is the distance between the slits in meters, theta is the angle to the normal made by the maximum in degrees or radians, n is the order of diffraction or the order of maximum, and lambda is the wavelength of the wave source. Now, many diffraction gratings you'll find are labelled with the number of slits found per millimetre. Now, we can convert this into d, the distance between the slits in metres, by saying d is equal to 1 over the number of lines per metre. So, for example, if there are 3 times 10 to the 5 slits per metre, d, the distance between 2 of the slits, is 1 over 3 times 10 to the 5, which is 3.33 times 10 to the minus 6 metres. Now, the maximum angle to see orders of maxima is where the beam is at right angles to the diffraction grating because the biggest angle you can get in this setup is a right angle, so therefore theta is equal to 90 degrees. So sine 90 in this instance is therefore equal to 1, so it cancels out of the equation. So therefore, the highest order of maxima visible is therefore calculated by the equation n equals d over lambda. Now remember, sine theta is sine 90, so it just becomes comes 1. Now, since n must be an integer, if the value is a decimal, it must be rounded down. So, for example, if you calculate this, uh, at n is equal to 3.2, then n equals 3 is the highest visible order observed, because at no point has it reached 4. So, again, if you've got n equals 3.9, the answer is still n equals 3, because you've not reached the fourth order to make it visible. Now, this equation shows us a few things. If lambda is bigger, then th we can say that sine theta is bigger, so therefore theta is bigger. So what this is telling us is that basically the larger the wavelength of your wave source going through the diffraction grating, the more the pattern will spread out. Now if d is bigger, the distance between the slits is bigger, sine theta becomes smaller, so therefore theta is smaller. So therefore the coarser of the grating, the less the pattern will spread out. Now, diffraction gratings are useful for separating light of different wavelengths with high resolution. So if you diffract white light through a diffraction grating, then the patterns due to different wavelengths within the white light are spread out by different amounts. So you can see in this particular image here. So each order in the pattern becomes a spectrum with the, uh, with the red on the outside and violet on the inside. Now you'll also notice that the zero with order maximum, the one in the centre, stays white because all of the wavelengths just pass straight through and arrive there in, in, with no phase difference whatsoever. Now, diffraction gratings are useful, for, as we said, for separating light at different wavelengths. So they are used in spectrometers to analyse light from stars, analyse the composition of stars, do chemical analysis, measure the redshift or rotation of stars, measure the wavelength and frequency of light from a star, observe the spectra of materials and analyse the absorption and emission spectra in stars. Because when you split up light from a star using a diffraction grating, you can see an absorption line spectra. Now the spectra with dark light correspond to different wavelengths of light that have been absorbed. Now each element in a star's atmosphere has a different absorption spectra so therefore astronomers can use these uh, absorption spectra to identify different elements in the atmosphere of the star. Now, diffraction gratings also play a role in X-ray crystallography. X-rays are directed at, thi at a thin crystal sheet, which acts to form its own diffraction grating. This is because the wavelengths of the X-rays are similar to the, the sizes to the gaps between the atoms. So therefore, as the X-rays will go through between the gaps of the um, atoms, because they're of a similar size to its wavelength, they'll naturally diffract. So therefore, this diffraction pattern can be used to measure the atomic space in certain materials. So the crystal acts like a diffraction grating and the space in between the atoms is the slit width and that can be found from your diffraction pattern by taking the measurement. So if you measure if you measure theta, if you measure lambda and you know n, you can work out what d is. Now one of the major discoveries using x-ray crystallography was actually working out the structure of DNA with this particular methodology. 
So if we've been successful and we've looked in today's lesson, we should be able to understand the plane transmission tra diffraction gradient at a normal incidence, understand where the derivation of d sine theta equals n lambda comes from, and have the applications of diffraction gradients. So if you've been successful and you've learned in today's lesson, you should be able to compare the single slit diffraction pattern with the pattern due to diffraction gratings, detail the interference pattern produced by a diffraction grating, and finally calculate values based on the diffraction grating investigation. So thank you very much for watching today's lesson on diffraction gratings, which is part of the waves topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.